on every possession. This time he hits a line drive that takes a bounce and still goes for a touchback right past Deion Stewart. So let's say hello again to Austin Allen, who leads the SEC in passing yards, passing touchdowns, and is the only quarterback in major college football with seven multiple passing touchdown games. Now he has just played above and beyond, I think, what anybody expected in his first year as a starter, replacing his older brother Brandon. And because he's played so well, they've started to add to his workload at the line of scrimmage, giving him more responsibility with orchestrating this offense. Raleigh Williams will get the night going for the Razorbacks with a good run. Impact players are brought to you by Chick-fil-A. Williams coming off a big day against Ole Miss, had 180 yards and a two-yard touchdown reception. Drew Morgan played a big role in last year's game against Auburn, had the game-winning touchdown in the fourth overtime. And Montavious Adams is on pace for career highs and sacks and tackles for loss, part of that outstanding defensive line. Second and three, and Allen to pass. And he slings this out of bounds incomplete as he was looking Morgan's way. Kind of threw that one away. I thought he might just take off and run after he eluded the initial pressure. Thought he might have had enough daylight to get close to that first down. As it is, still a very workable, manageable third down and three. Auburn's defense coming in, doing a nice job on third down, owing allowing 31.5% conversion. And a vast majority of those have been third and seven plus. So this is a, a much easier, manageable distance for Arkansas. Third and three as they go. Trips to the top here. And Allen gets it complete for a first down to Drew Morgan, who takes it out to midfield. Finally tackled by Holsey, a gain of 19. Yeah, you have two guys clearing out and Morgan patiently coming underneath. Good protection. Raleigh Williams stays in to help block. Nice pocket. And Drew Morgan right in front of his quarterback. Two receivers clear out. Morgan comes underneath. And the first third down conversion of the game for Arkansas. Nothing happening there as Big Mon Adams with a tackle for loss. Well, he is so quick for as big and powerful as he is. And he used that quickness that time to go right inside the center, Frank Ragnow, into the backfield. Very disruptive for a guy that size. Talk to a lot of coordinators around the SEC, and many will point to Mon Adams as being the best defensive tackle in the league. And there are some great ones. Second and 14. They got to him. Put another sack on the list as Carl Lawson and Adams got to Allen. Well, Lawson's working on Brian Wallace right here. That's a tough matchup without help. And he kind of freezes him. He stops and then he goes and Brandon Wallace or Brian Wallace has had trouble staying engaged with the ever dangerous pass rusher. So on back to back plays, we see those two elite defensive linemen. Second down, it was Mon Adams. Third down, Carl Lawson. They pace this Auburn defense. Seven sacks for Carl Lawson on the season. Third and 18 now for the Razorbacks as the flag comes in and they will whistle that. Probably going to be third and 23 now. Prior to the snap, false start. Offense. Brett Bielema has got an outstanding punter of his own in Toby Baker. And at this point, he has to be thinking, be smart, be safe. 
Trying to play a little field position here. Allen's a pass on third and 23. Ball knocked up in the air, and it is intercepted by Carl Lawson. Well, it's, it's Mon Adams and also Trey Williams. So Trey Williams is going to come on a blitz, but Mon Adams is going to push the pocket. And I'm just, well, now they're saying Lawson was offsides. I was really surprised Arkansas went ahead and threw it on third and 23. Lawson is the guy who gets the interception, but they said he was offside. Dauphin we're back to third and 18. Either that or you keep Sprinkle and Raleigh Williams both in to help protect. Long ball just to the outside of Drew Morgan. Let's go back and take a peek at what the penalty flag was on. Well, here's Lawson right here. And that's who they identified as being offsides. I don't know. One of the better punters in the country is Toby Baker. As Marcus Davis puts his heels on the 16 for the return. Directional punt right there on the sideline gave the kick coverage team a good chance. So Sean with Bo Jackson as Bo on a video message that was just played to the 87,000 announced that Charles Barkley will have a statue honoring him and his great yeah. athletic legacy here on campus. Well, the, the video message was kind of. Bo going back and forth with Charles saying hey you're the number one best athlete I'm number two you could make an argument for either one of those guys. Now well, here is Eli Stove and Stove breaks free. This Stove is red hot to start the game. Touchdown run by the freshman Eli Stowe. And the 119th consecutive PAT for Daniel Carlson. Well, that didn't take long. <laughs> Beautiful play, Rhett Lashley. Very seldom do you see Sean White under center. It kind of fooled the Arkansas defense. And then the speed of Eli Stove, the freshman from Niceville, Florida, took over. And then one play, Auburn on the scoreboard. Really a great call by offensive coordinator Rhett Lashley, a real tendency breaker on the very first play of the game. And that is the Daniel Carlson we're used to seeing with yet another touchback. Why it's a tendency breaker. Normally when Auburn brings a wide receiver in motion, it's to give the ball inside. And you try to make these guys' eyes go away from the back. But what's going to happen is they are going to fake it to Petway, who carried it 39 times last week, and give it to Stowe. And then watch right here. Blocks by the receiver, blocks by the fullback, and there is nobody else out there. Everybody on the Arkansas defense locked inside, expecting Petway to carry it on the first play of the game. Instead, it was the jet sweep to Stowe for a touchdown. 
Whaley getting the carry for Arkansas. Just a gain of two there. First down is so critical for Arkansas. The way they're built, the way they play offense, they have to be successful on first down. Dan Enos is an excellent play caller, but when they get behind the chains, it really affects them. Last week we saw them, they were beautiful on first down. When we had them against Alabama, not so much. And I would say this defensive line is comparable to yes. Alabama's when it comes to pure talent. Quick bubble this time to Morgan, and he stays in. That was a shifty move that time to get the extra yardage. Arkansas needs to have balance on first down where they have that threat of either run pass because the more times they can stay away from third down and definite pass situations against this defensive front, the better off they'll be. Tavius Russell, Carl Lawson. Marlon Davidson on the end here, number three. He's a true freshman. And he's a grown man himself. 6'3, 275. First down pass. Here comes Lawson with pressure. And it forces an errant throw by Austin Allen. Holly. Well, guys, you can already see. Look at Dan Skipper right now getting into it with this defensive front of Auburn. There is a lot of pushing and shoving, and it started early in the pregame. Now, this is a routine. Arkansas always gathers in a circle before the game, but Auburn didn't like it when they came out because they do the same thing. Everybody had to split them up. They have warned the officials that this happened pregame and to keep an eye on things during the game. But I'm telling you, after every play, there is barking, pushing, shoving. It's got a little slam to it tonight out here boys Todd what'd you make of that pregame well I, I just think it's a, a lot of noise I don't think there's too much seriousness to it I mean obviously you know the whole thing with the logo and I'm sure the Auburn players didn't like Arkansas's players being out by the logo but this is when it really matters this is when it counts when they're actually uh, going after real plays here first and five after the penalty motioning back in this time is Hammonds and he gets the ball and is able to get passed out towards midfield where it'll be a first down for Arkansas. Arkansas, we, you know, we've done a lot of Arkansas games, but just for those people that aren't as familiar, three new offensive line starters. Dan Skipper, who Holly just referenced, the big left tackle. He was the right tackle last year. Frank Ragnow, their other returning starter, he was a guard last year. He's now a center. And that unit is still trying to build chemistry here six or seven games in. Play action on first down. Allen incomplete trying to find the senior receiver Keon Hatcher. There is that offensive line for Arkansas. Dan Skipper has been a big part of it for a few years now. And that guy yelled at Froholt. He was a defensive lineman last year. He came from Denmark. He only had two years of high school football. He's a relatively new football player, period. And he's starting in the SEC West at left guard. Saw the 18 sacks allowed. Consider what the fourth quarter, both the Alabama and Texas A&M game looked like when they were forced to pass. And Allen was taking a beating. Second and 10. Straight up the middle that time, Whaley for five. Holly. And I spoke with the Arkansas offensive line coach. He said, you know, with three new starters, we knew it was going to take time to gel. But last week, for the first time, we really felt like five played as one. This is a different defensive front they're facing this week. I'm telling you, down here at field level, these guys are grown men. It's going to be a big challenge for this offensive line. Well, they ran one of their vintage plays there, the wham play, and they hit Dontavious Russell. You got to do certain things to tape some steam out of these guys. They did it on that second down play. Third and five now. Tackled right at the line to make was Drew Morgan by Rudy Ford. The mark looks like it should be good for a first down. Well, Drew Morgan's a smart receiver. I'm sure he knew what he needed with the catch. Nonetheless, this is an outstanding tackle on open field. But it looks like forward progress is going to give him the first down. Good protection that time, the tight end. 
Jeremy Sprinkle helped Brian Wallace on Carl Lawson on that pass rush. See Morgan with the most receptions for a first down. He's got three catches already tonight. Two of them came on third down. Back to basics with Williams and Mon Adams and the rest of the group stacked him up. That's a loss of one. This Auburn defense has held six of their last seven opponents to less than 20 points. They opened the season with a very impressive game against Clemson, holding the Tigers to their lowest point total since 2014, and they have played at a pretty consistent level, even in their two losses all season. That was just a 19 to 13 game against Clemson. And here's the screen to Williams, able to cut back. So you have to do certain things against teams that have great pass rushing ability. Screens, draws, misdirection, wham plays, things that you get them coming upfield and you take advantage of their strength against them. We saw a wham play earlier in the drive, and that screen right there was an effective play on second down. Third and one is they're going to bring in a little bit of beef here. Number 44, Cantrell goes 270, and the fullback, Hayden Johnson. They're going to split Cantrell out here. Play clock's down to five. They better get moving here. Hit zero. They, they didn't get it off. Unless they called a timeout from the sideline, they did not get this play off. That could be a very costly mistake. Again, you don't want to put yourself in pass situations Grand on third game, down. Offense. Five yard penalty. Third down. You know, something unique about Jordan Hare, the play clocks are low. They're just over the heads of those standing in the corner of the yeah. end zone. Well, it's up to the quarterback and the offensive coordinator. They come out on the field before the game. They go through all that. They they identify where those are. That play just was slow getting called, and then they had motion with the play. And that difference between third and one and third and six against this defense, that's a big deal. So five yards further, third and six. Need to get to the 31. Lawson is the guy at the top of the screen, number 55. Deflected and should have been intercepted by Holsey. Well, Marlon Davidson, number three, is the guy that gets the initial deflection. He's going to rush number three. You're going to see him get a piece of the ball right here. That's the first deflection. He goes on a little stunt. He comes outside and gets a hand on the football. And then it's deflected two more times. And if that is caught, it's a touchdown because there was an escort of blockers out in front of Holsey had he been able to hold on to that interception. So Baker on to punt. See if he can pin them here. Back rotation worked. And that penalty. Cost them a shot at what could have been a 50 yard field goal. Instead, Auburn ball when we return. And taking a double header of SEC action. Coming up later, number 23, Ole Miss and Death Valley taking on number 25, LSU. Of course, LSU Todd, 2 0 since Ed Orgeron took over as the interim head yeah. coach. Well, and he's not been bashful about saying how much he wants the job, calls it a dream job, a Louisiana native. There's a lot of momentum for him right now, but you know, that 2-0, and oh, they, they played Missouri and Southern Mississippi. Tonight, a better test against a, a good Ole Miss team in an intense rivalry game. Here's Petway, Cameron Petway, who was a workhorse last time out against Mississippi State had 39 carries for 169 yards and three touchdowns. You know, we've talked to Rob Smith, the defensive coordinator of Arkansas, many times this year, and he always says we have to limit explosive plays. First play of this game was an explosive play for a touchdown. Sean White, as he goes downfield, and that should have oh, been intercepted goodness. by Ryan Pulley. 
dueling dropped INTs between these two. Well, it looked like a misfire because of a miscommunication. His wide receiver, Tony Stevens, kept going. That ball was thrown like a back shoulder fade or a comeback route. There was good pressure that got to Sean White, but he's lucky on that play. Third and three as Cam Martin will come and meet White in the backfield. And a first down reception to Ryan Davis. Ryan Davis is the quickest of the Auburn wide receivers. They've got a lot of youth at their skill position. And they've accounted for most of their big plays, most of their yardage. And of those guys, Ryan Davis the quickest. There's the pitch to Petway. Yes. Now remember that action right there, Joe, because Auburn has a lot of plays off of running plays. They've got a play action pass where they'll fake that same little toss and raise up and take a shot deep later in the game. Good hard run that time by Bubba Petway. He's a 240 pounder and they move the chains again. Well, we've yet to see and we may not see carry on Johnson their leading rusher a much different runner than Petway. Petway north south bruiser between the tackles and look at Sean White a big gainer for Sean White. Well number 85 Jalen Harris is going to get a huge block. I think this might have been called by design. Jalen Harris is going to lead block out here and watch Sean White. Everybody's thinking Petway is going to keep it. Sean White not known as a runner got a big play there. And now Petway continues good hard work on the inside against Arkansas. Last year in the four overtime win for Arkansas, they did not give up any big plays of 20 yards or more until the last two possessions of the game. Already two for Auburn. And you get the sense they're going to get a heavy dose of this. Yet another carry for Bubba Petway. There is Kerryon Johnson, who's been dealing with an injury the last two weeks. And averages 89 yards a game for this offense. Now he's a much different runner than Petway. Kerryon Johnson gives him a little make you miss, wiggle, very good out of the backfield. But again, Petway has been the guy carrying the load. Holly, what have you heard about Carrion? I'm told that Carrion is available to play tonight with a right ankle injury, but I've watched him carefully in warmups where I thought he looked tentative. The coaches said they didn't want to rush him to return because they have so many games left ahead, and it looks right now the way they're moving the ball, they may not need him. They could protect him for next week. Slant left formation here with Petway and Chandler leading the way, and he just bulldozes into the end zone. No mistake, Auburn is a run first football team. If they can run it 60 times and throw it 20, that's the perfect balance for them. And they're off to a good start tonight. Fifth rushing touchdown of the season for Cameron Bubba Petway. Just power football. Lead through, pull the backside guard, and you have a 240-pound tailback lowering that boom right at the goal line. Auburn, impressive so far. Another touchback with the big leg of Daniel Carlson. Let's check in with that man.
Thank you. It is uncanny That's ridiculous. as you look at the remaining undefeated teams for Spam and Texas A&M playing today. It is uncanny how consistent Alabama can rely on their special teams and yeah. defense to score. Whaley gets rocked by Trey Williams. You know, on that list of undefeated, we just put up there, Todd. And you and I were watching a little bit of West Virginia yeah. today. What do you make of them? Better than I thought. You know, it's kind of interesting. I haven't gotten a chance to see all those undefeated teams, but I watched a little bit of Boise State last night. I watched a little Nebraska today in West Virginia, and I think of those three anyway, West Virginia has impressed me the most, both offensively and defensively in their game today against TCU. Second and 12. Allen goes down yet again. That was Byron Cowart, the former number one recruit in the country. Second sack given up by Arkansas's yeah. offensive line. Pressure right here on the inside, working on the right guard, Jake Rollerson. And, and you know, one thing that I think Austin Allen's going to have to do, whatever that clock in his head is about when he's got to get rid of the ball, he needs to wind it a little faster in this game. He, he cannot hold the ball long against this Auburn defense. Very good job by Dontavious Russell there. And then there's always this guy in spots like this. Third and 19. Can he escape? Allen lost the ball. And there's a fight for it. Marlon Davidson is in the middle of that. He was going to just pump fake. It's a good decision to leave the pocket and run. He's going to pump fake, and as he does, he just loses control of the football. And Auburn with the turnover. In Arkansas's two losses, they had eight turnovers that led directly to points. He got away with an interception that was wiped out because of an offsides penalty, but that turnover is all on Austin Allen. Look at over the last five games, seventh fumble loss. The true freshman Marlon Davidson with the recovery there. And Auburn starts at the 27. Here's Chandler Cox. Throwing the dog a bone there. Chandler Cox, the fullback, a very physical kid. He's the guy in this offense. If you follow him, the ball's going to be behind him most of the time. Mostly a blocker. You throw him the ball every once in a while to keep him happy. And now Truitt gets a carry. Former receiver turned running back. Dives into the end zone. Little five foot nine, 185 pounder with a 20 yard touchdown run. Well, keep an eye on Chandler Cox. You throw him a bone with the pass, and then you let the big dog do his job. Lead block, he hunts up the middle linebacker, Brooks Ellis, and the running back, Truett, cuts right in behind it. Again, power football with a fullback leading the way, and Auburn's offense. Gus Malzahn told us they're starting to settle in with their identity offensively the last three or four weeks. I'd say that's an understatement. And consider the changes yeah. that they've made. Remember Gus Malzahn, who's really truly generationally one of the offensive wizards yep. of high school football and college football. But a few weeks ago, he turned things over 
to his longtime sidekick Brett Lashley and this offense has looked different now well, and, and credit to Gus Malzahn he, he made the decision for 26 years he's always been the play caller he's always put the game plans together and he finally recognized you know what in the best interest of our team in the big picture I need to I need to step away from doing this he turned it over to Rhett Lashley he be, has become a better head coach and Rhett Lashley has taken this offense to a different level it started in the LSU game and it has gotten better each week. Seen it every which way now from this Auburn offense. Adnan. So now Hurts with two passing touchdowns and the rushing touchdown for Alabama, who's up big now on AM. Devois Whaley, he was met and sent back by Stephen Roberts. So Bama sits on top at number one this is what the preseason poll looked like in terms of number one votes a smattering across the board LSU even in the mix there this is what it looked like this past week you got your friend from the LA Times that's keeping that <laughs> Michigan vote there but it is so hard to deny the reality of what's happening in T-Town of course watching what's been bubbling up here on the plains in recent weeks we could have a very interesting end of November couldn't we Allen goes yeah. down. This front is doing damage. Jeff Holland that time. The third sack for Auburn. Well, again, the clock has to get speeded up for Austin Allen. His guys are overmatched with the pass rushing ability of this Auburn defensive front. So it's got to get out of his hand or he's got to run sooner in order to survive. Eli Stowe, Bubba Petway, and Stanton Truitt give Auburn a 21 0 end of first quarter lead. And for another 76 and a score. We had all the games going up here in the yeah, booth all day long. It's fun watch. This is the fifth third down play for Arkansas, and the third one that has been where they've needed 10 yards or more to convert. Very tough against this defense. Third and 10. And he's able to get it to Williams, who tried to fight for that line to make. It'll depend on the spot. I think they're going to put him maybe just a couple inches short. When you can generate enough pressure by rushing four, and that frees you up to use seven in pass coverage, it's very difficult to get guys open on third and long at that time Austin Allen had to dump it down to his running back as an outlet and Brett Bielema right now showing he's going to go for it on fourth and one in a desperate situation fourth and a couple inches from your own 35 pitch this time Whaley able to get to the corner but that's the reality of down 21 to start the Final second snap. quarter timeout Auburn and they're saying a timeout was called by Auburn prior to the snap. Arkansas out. tried to go with a quick snap. They knew they were going to fake like they were wedging it inside and get the ball to the perimeter. But Auburn from the sideline able to call timeout before the ball was snapped. Let's go to the studio to add man. The Broncos opened up the year with a win at Northwestern as they are rolling through the Mac also beat the Illini back in September.
Well, I, I don't know if Arkansas is still going to go for it now or not. They had the element of surprise with the quick snap. They would have converted. And now after that timeout, I don't think Brett Bielema wants to mess around with it. As Toby Baker, the senior punter, trots out and Marcus Davis will be back to return. So from a fourth and in inches that they thought they converted to a timeout Auburn and Baker to punt. And it's not a good looking punt at all takes a bounce at the 27 and then an Arkansas roll harmlessly inside the 20. Well the season review of Auburn they have been outstanding running the ball Todd and you think about the losses well it's Clemson and AMM and they played both of them tough especially defensively. And now look at what they've turned into and look what's ahead and that number one of course the 81st Iron Bowl will be played November 26th at Alabama well, the explosive nature of this offense they have 21 points but they've only had the ball for three minutes and 17 seconds and three big explosive runs already and here comes Petway again as he lowers the shoulder for ten and a half yards. Again the last two games Auburn and Sean White has thrown the ball 18 times in each game because they've established their run and thrown the ball when they want to going to run the ball out of that stack right formation as he cuts it back and then the second effort just dragging defenders with him. They claim the ball is out as Santos Ramirez comes up with it. Let's see what they say down on the field. You know what he did rip the ball out. I think this is right. It is. Petway is fighting for extra yardage and Santos Ramirez who's the guy who got the big hit on Chad Kelly last week and forced the fumble rips it out. This is a heads up play by Ramirez as Petway is getting ready to go to the ground. He rips the ball out. Oh he's laying on the ground it looked like there Todd. Clearly you can see yeah. Petway had hit the ground at the moment that Ramirez then rips it out. Yep. Yeah that one will get a reverse. So it's pretty obvious that they will have the indisputable video evidence to reverse the call here. It was clear the ball came out and that's what I saw but also very clear when we show those replays that Petway was down had both arms around the football before it came out. How about the running ability of Petway you know Todd he came to Auburn he was in the mold of that fullback that H position only yeah. had a carry last year one carry coincidentally it was against Arkansas but as a workhorse he is a weapon. Well 39 carries in their last game now he had a bye week so it wasn't a week ago that he had 39 carries but he was the he was the workhorse in that big win on the road at Mississippi State. And again he's a north south guy he's not going to try to make you miss he's not going to dance in the hole. He's a straight ahead runner but he runs with a lot of weight behind his pads as well. If they do turn this over or if they do reverse this call and give the ball back to Auburn. This would be the perfect time for Rhett Lashley to go play action and take a shot deep. They've not tried it yet. They like to take deep shots and it's usually off of some form of play action or a fake screen of some sort. And, and when you say play action with them that could also be that jet sweep motion. Yes. That they're prone to use and there is Rhett Lashley one of the real top up and coming coordinators in the sport. And he took over the play calling in recent weeks and this offense has found its identity for sure. He and Gus Malzahn have a long history dating back to high school dating back to middle school in the state of Arkansas. Yep. And again prior to the LSU game Gus said you run the show now let me do the, the head coaching thing and be a better game manager and strategist. And you be the play caller. After further review, the runner was down at the 47 yard line. That was on the first down for Auburn. 
That's Ken Williamson is heading up this SEC crew and Doug Linebarger is upstairs with the replay folks. Well they got it right for sure. I mean Petway is running hard. He's charging. Arkansas looking for something good to happen. A nice idea by Ramirez but Petway is just bulldozing his way to this Arkansas defense. A lot of time on the sideline for Rhett Lashley to decide what play he wants on this first down play from just shy of midfield. Correction, the ball is on the 42 yard line. That's still a first down for Auburn. So a first down for Auburn after they reversed the call. And Petway with a gain of three. And right now Arkansas is selling out to stop the run. They're single coverage on the wide receivers, a single safety, and trying to get as many bodies around the line of scrimmage as they can which is going to make them vulnerable to a deep throw down the field. Darius Slate, number 81, is the fastest wide receiver for Auburn. Here is that play action off the jet motion, and he's going to actually check down to it with Ryan Davis as Davis gets two yards there, tackled by Andre Tolliver. Good coverage downfield by Arkansas that time, forcing the dump off throw. And a good decision by Sean White not to get greedy. It wasn't there. Take what the defense gives you and give yourself a chance on third down. Third and five. That was thrown off the mark as Tolliver actually had a break on it. He was trying to get it to Ryan Davis. Holly. Well, this defense of Arkansas was reeling after the first quarter here on the sidelines. The defensive coordinator, Rob Smith, gathered them together, and they have tried to make some adjustments. Remember, Auburn is coming off a of bye week, so there may be some things going on that Arkansas hadn't exactly planned for. I heard him say, we've got to have better eye discipline. Get your eyes in the right place. A much better defensive stand right there. Jared Cornelius back to return. Nobody has been able to get return yards off of punts against Auburn. Negative three punt return yards given up as Kevin Phillips skies this one and turns it over and it does bounce into the end zone but a 4.41 hang time for Kevin Phillips as Arkansas needs a little something here. Touchdowns by Auburn they had a 78 yarder on their first offensive play by Eli Stove and the defense has been sensational as well with three sacks against Austin Allen and the Razorbacks. Here's a bubble screen to Morgan. And see, that's just like a run. It's a pass, but it's a run. You get the ball out there quick. He's got two blockers. You're having trouble running the ball inside against this defensive front. That's a good counter against Kevin Steele's defense. Kevin Steele last year was the defensive coordinator at LSU. He's been in a lot of places. He's been at Alabama with Nick Saban. He's been at Clemson, and he has done an outstanding job with this defense. He said he simplified things, and they demanded that guys played hard and that they tackled well. And, and so far this season, that defense has been pretty consistent. Does he have talent up front? And this will be a first down for Arkansas. Replaced Will Muschamp, who was the defensive coordinator here, who's now the head coach at South Carolina. Also an outstanding defensive coordinator in his own right. Interesting to hear from Kevin. They didn't have to change that much. Yeah. Well, they, they both spent time under Nick Saban. They both kind of had the same philosophy on a lot of things defensively. And he tried to keep as much of the terminology similar as he could to make it easier of an adjustment for his players. Allen. As he goes to Cantrell, and with good blocks in front from Dan Skipper, 
Austin Cantrell will move the chains. Yeah, and we've seen two really good change of pace first down plays on this possession for Arkansas. Dan Skipper, number 70, is going to get out in front of this on the screen pass to Cantrell. Also, Rag now. Those are two good first down plays for the Razorbacks. Flag is down at the 46. Prior to those two first down plays, 1.6 yard per play on first down for Arkansas. So this drive, they go the wide receiver bubble screen to Morgan, and then the tight end screen to Cantrell. Two very productive plays. After the play was over, unsportsmanlike conduct, offense number 70, his first in the game, defense number 57, his first in the game. Those fouls offset, the down counts. Second down. Skipper into Sean Davis. Sean Davis, a young linebacker out of Pritchard, Alabama. There it is on the sideline after the play. It's a little jawing, a little talking. Not sure that deserves a penalty. Just a, a guy maybe stepping in between saying, head back to your huddle. Second and one, Williams trying to drive, but it was to Sean Davis, the first to get into the backfield. Let's see where they spot this. Yeah, really a well-timed run blitz by Deshaun Davis. The guard, Rarlson, unable to cut him off. Deshaun Davis, his first year playing, a very smart guy. Kind of the quarterback of the defense. Thought it was interesting, Kevin Steele described him as a problem solver. Said if he sees something out there that's a problem, he has the ability to fix it on the field. It's a very nice good leader. way to describe a middle yeah, linebacker. really is. is. as close as you can get and move it forward a first down for Arkansas they are desperate to get on the board here well, we've seen a couple screens on first down one of the things Arkansas loves to do but it takes a little bit longer protection is play action with the deep crossing routes the over routes to try to get a big chunk play the problem is you got to protect for a little bit longer in order to do that Last two first down plays for Arkansas, nine yards, each one of them. Allen feeling the heat, but able to get it complete just short of midfield to Cantrell. And he is holding his right knee. He has been such a tough guy in recent weeks against some of the best defensive oh. fronts in the SEC but he is down right now you know after he, that play. he took a shot at the end of the play that did not look good that's the, his dad Bobby who's been a longtime member of the Arkansas staff it was Carl Lawson number 55 and quite honestly this could have been called a penalty on Lawson the ball's gone and he rolls into the back of the quarterback's legs certainly not trying to hurt the quarterback but Austin Allen looks in pain. We'll check on him as we return. Ty Story is warming up. Field. This is what happened moments ago, Todd. Well, he's stepping up in the pocket. Again, Auburn with outstanding pressure. And Carl Lawson. Hustling at the end of the play, rolls into the back of the legs. As his father Bobby looks on, and as seldom used high story, the redshirt freshman is in at quarterback. Here's the pitch to Williams on second and four. Let's go to the studio and check in with that man. Yeah, Jake Browning is currently tracking fifth in our Heisman poll of official voters. 
Last like week him. was fourth. Yeah, I was very impressed with him, very impressed with that team. Third and two now. TJ Hammonds into the backfield. And he takes the pitch from Story. And there is nowhere to go at all. As Marlon Davidson with a tackle for loss of five yards. Now well, Marlon Davidson is in a stand up position. And he's working against Austin Cantrell. Here's Marlon Davidson, the freshman, working on the tight end. He comes right inside of him into the backfield and stops this play. This defensive front is legit for Auburn, and that's how you build a great defense. And Kevin Steele has the makings of a great defense because of that defensive front. All too familiar scene, a punt from Toby Baker here tonight. And once again, it harmlessly bounces in for a touchback. Now that's the medical tent, and Austin Allen, their star quarterback, is in it. Down 21. We've been rolling the live oaks at Tumors Corner for over 50 years. There's a live look right now at Tumors Corner. There it is overhead. But you see Sanford Hall and the famed clock tower close by. We're not far away at Jordan Hare Stadium. And here comes the motion around with Stowe, who opened up the game with a big touchdown run. Same kind of play. They started in the shotgun like they do 99% of the time. The last minute, Sean White went up under center, and they brought the wide receiver on the jet sweep. That time, Arkansas a little bit more prepared for it. They stack left formation as Petway runs out of that. He just trucked Santos Ramirez, spun and kept going, 10-yard run. You know, it's pretty obvious in this game, just watching the action on both sides of the ball. Good up tempo there as they snapped in only nine seconds. The difference between a team in Auburn that's coming off of a bye week and a team in Arkansas that has played eight consecutive weeks and gets their bye week next week. There, there's a much different speed that Auburn is playing at on both sides of the ball. There's Sean White that time keeping. Remember, he had a 40-yard run earlier tonight. Now, Brett Bielema thought because there was a fall break that they were going to get their team a little bit more rested. They were able to allow them to have a little bit more rest, sleep in on Monday and Tuesday, and still get them on the field. But I, I still think when you play eight weeks consecutively and you're in the SEC West, it, it takes its toll on you. Third and three, they go under center. And this is a pitch to Stanton Truitt. And he was cut down that time by Tobelfer. That was really good discipline by the Arkansas defense because that jet sweep, again, is to try to get eyes in the wrong place. But Arkansas's eyes were in the right place. They stayed in position with contain. And Andre Oliver with a nice submarine tackle short of the first down. So Kevin Phillips on to punt again. I told you that unique stat. Negative punt return yards given up this year. This is high and short. and It'll be a fair catch as the coverage team was standing right over Jared Cornelius. Austin Allen is still in that medical tent. Will we see him stick around? run and he is going to take the field now Brett Bielema has said this kid has unparalleled moxie his words to describe him are that he's tough but boy a long evaluation he's only just now taken a couple of snaps and run right back on the field well that right leg is his plant leg when he throws the football just be interesting to see how much he trusts that new brace to plant and step into throws He's going to throw right away. And it was a good ball to Keon Hatcher. 
as he gets it out to the 35 yard line a 17 yard reception. You know what Brett Bielema talked about the moxie but Joe you and I were talking about this every single defensive coordinator and head coach of an opposing team that we've talked to about Austin Allen without us even asking a question has said the same thing the guy shows incredible toughness he keeps getting back up and throwing the ball with accuracy I mean, he is a well respected guy around this league Devwa Whaley on the carry here it's really tough to find room against that Auburn front seven Darrell Williams with the tackle well even though you're down 21 to nothing you can't abandon who you are and what your offense is built like that's why you still have to run the football or try to run the football because again if you get into a situation where you're just going to throw every down you play right into the strength of this Auburn defense and their ability to rush the passer. Well he's going to stay in the backfield with Allen when he's got Reed and Cornelius speedy targets on the bottom of your screen on second and nine. Here's a slant this time to Cornelius. And he's going to be close to the yardage needed near the 45 yard line. Austin Allen's now hit his last six passes. It's been a couple screens. That was a quick throw. Again, Dan Eno's trying to figure out what can I do to get the ball out of his hands and protect him a little bit. Six straight completions after leaving the game moments ago with what Arkansas has told us is a knee sprain. Third and short. Whaley tackled for a loss by Cowart. A little surprised that Whaley's in there instead of Raleigh Williams. You can't dance on short yardage. You got to lower your head and dive in there. The fullback Kendrick Jackson leading number 34 Cantrell. You got to lower the shoulder and go right into the sternum of number nine and try to power for the first down. As soon as he tried to dance and bounce the play was dead. Nice play by Coward in that Auburn defensive front. And Baker skies another one. And once again, it hits inside the five and runs through the end zone. Well, as always, we invite you to start off your NFL Sunday with NFL insiders. They'll have all the breaking stories and injury news, and then Sunday NFL countdown. That crew will take you right up to kickoff. Monday Night Football Texans against the Broncos. That'll get going at 8:15 Eastern on ESPN. Of course, think about former quarterback, current quarterback, and the difference in price tag between Brock Osweiler and Trevor Simeon. There's a few zeros missing over here. Jeez, that's quite a difference. Maybe they're paying Osweiler by the inch. As Petway takes it ahead again, he has gotten plenty of work wow. already. Again, 39 carries against Mississippi State. That's his 13th carry of the night here in the first half. We've not seen carry on Johnson and I would expect that we won't see him now well, carry on Johnson has not been at 100 percent health did try to practice this week but had an ankle sprain two weeks ago in that game against Mississippi State and in came Bubba Petway in fact he had 34 carries in just two and a half quarters in that game second and seven now well and I think an ankle injury like that to a guy like Petway wouldn't be nearly as troubling as it is to carry on Johnson because of his style of running carry on is a is a jump cut guy a guy who can make people miss and that really is difficult when you have one bad ankle so they're going to give him extra time would look like and go with Stanton Truitt as the backup and Cam Martin when Petway needs a break tonight of course Truitt had a 20 yard touchdown run earlier. Timeout, Auburn, second timeout of the half. And that gives us a chance to go to the studio to add man. This will be a 30 second timeout.
Look forward to hearing what the guys have to say after watching Alabama do damage again. Jalen Hurts had two passing touchdowns, a rushing touchdown, and Jonathan Allen with a fumble recovery for a touchdown. Well, if Alabama played, then that means they must have gotten a defensive That's touchdown. It. And it, it happened just... again. <laughs> Happens every week. And we're starting to get some clarity now here, Todd, when it comes to the chase for the college football playoff. What's your top four look like right well, now? Well, my top four right now has not changed very much. It's still Alabama number one, Ohio State second, Clemson number three, even though they have not played, I don't think, at the same level that the top two have. And then Washington is that surging team. I'm very impressed with them on both sides of the ball. Michigan very close behind. And everybody's very impressed by this guy, Cameron Bubba Petway. Show it 240 pounds against this Hogs defense. 27 more yards for Petway. Now, this is just, I mean, they got it going. This is just zone blocking. Petway reads it, shows good vision, and then the strength to break tackles. You're not going to bring him down with arm tackles. Rhett Lashley and Gus Malzahn very content to just run the football now. Under two minutes in the first half, they have a commanding lead. They'll get the ball to start the third quarter. And they have everything going exactly the way they want. Their quarterback's only thrown the ball five times. They still may take a shot at a deep ball to try to get one more touchdown here before the break. This could be it right here. Threw it wide open inside the 20 into the end zone. Money War Eagle. Well, Truett is going to come in motion here. And he's going to go out. And Santos Ramirez, as he comes up, he's just going to kind of get frozen looking at the reverse and lose sight of the guy running right past him, Truett. The motion, again, affects eyes. That time it affected the safety. And Auburn with another touchdown. Todd, teams don't stay the same. They get better or worse. This Auburn event offense is getting a whole lot better as the season goes on. An ESPN College Football Primetime presented by Hampton by Hilton. Sean White, I'll tell you, we, we've talked about Austin Allen. Sean White from last year to this year, a much different quarterback, very productive. He leads the SEC in pass completion percentage, passing efficiency, and when you can run the ball the way they've run it the last three weeks or three ball games, I'll tell you, that just plays right into his efficiency. He's only thrown it six times tonight, four completions. Last week, 18 attempts, 14 completions. He's an accurate guy, very good decision maker, and his team really responds to his toughness and his competitiveness. Now there is the national leader in touchbacks, Daniel Carlson. Taco Bell is a proud partner of the college football playoff. Be on the lookout for Taco Bell student sections, passionate fans like this all season long. And is there ever passion here at Auburn? One of the great pageantry filled shows in college football. Always feels like an event down here, doesn't it? Yeah. It's a fun place to come to to do a game. The tailgating, the RVs, the Thursday Tiger night dinners walk. at Acre. Yeah. That doesn't hurt either. With Chef Bank Legendary <laughs> eating this weekend. I think they should make a statue for Chef Bancroft no, exactly. and Miss Eloise. <laughs> you got Barkley, the Heisman winners, and Miss Eloise and Bancroft yeah. in your in your world. There's Trey Williams with the tackle there. You know, Brett Bielema. This is a tough one to solve. Yeah. Down well, four touchdowns just before the half to Gus Malzahn, the Arkansas native. Got those proud Arkansas roots from being inducted into the high school sports hall of fame back in his native state. 
to his success at Arkansas as well. Raleigh Williams, good run that time taken down by Swain. See Ole Miss and LSU still set to come your way. Leonard Fournette is expected to be back, but they haven't been too shabby with Darius Geis running the ball as well. Third and one, Williams. And he's able to muscle ahead for a first down. See, they had Williams out that last third down and short, and Whaley was in there, and the young back tried to dance and make a bigger play than what was there. Williams, a little bigger, a little more experienced runner, got the first down on third and short that time. Keon Hatcher now coming back to the ball. Only five seconds left, six seconds left in the in the first half. Arkansas. Timeout, Arkansas. First timeout of the half. This will be a 30-second timeout. What a night it's been for Auburn running the ball. Well, they, they make no uh, bones about it. They want to run the football. They're a power running team. This was the first play. They fake the inside run and go with the jet sweep. They open the game with a big play by Eli Stowe, and then they started pounding it with their big 240 bound back and the one quarterback run. You had the quarterback run and the jet sweep, and everything else after that has been pretty much this guy, Cam Petway. Good blocking in that offensive line. Good lead blocking by the fullback, the H-back Chandler Cox. And you take a look at those numbers. 268 yards rushing already. The last time out against Mississippi State, they built a 35 to nothing halftime lead. They had 335 yards of total offense in the first half. And they have picked up right where they left off after the bye week. Hey, I thought you brought up a great point about Gus Malzahn, clock off, guy who's been acclaimed seconds, as an offensive genius, but yeah. felt like he needed to be more of a head coach. Turned over the play calling Thank duties to uh, Rhett Lashley, and this engine has been revving now for weeks. He feels like he's developed better relationships with his players and also with his other coaches because there's a lot of responsibility. If you're the play caller and the offensive coordinator, per se, you lose touch with a lot of other things. You have to really hone in on that. Is there something here for Arkansas before the half? That was a good gainer to Keon Hatcher, a 12-yard reception, and still four seconds remain. They're going to try a long field goal here, try to get some points on the board before halftime. Adam McFain on to attempt. The long field goal here, a 54-yarder. Auburn called timeout. Timeout, Auburn, third and final timeout of the half. This is a 30-second timeout. McFain has hit from 49 in his career, took over the place-kicking duties just a few weeks ago. Mentioned earlier the connection to Arkansas with Gus Malzahn. Brett Lashley is offensive coordinator. You know, they won a couple of Arkansas State High School titles at Shiloh Christian. They both played at Arkansas. You can comment on the haircuts later. Coached high school football successfully as coach and assistant. You know, Red's been with them since the eighth yeah. grade as a player, yeah. as a graduate assistant, moving on to Arkansas in 2006, and then gave him the offensive coordinator job when he was the head coach at Arkansas State. And of course, they come down here. There's Jay Jacobs, the athletic director, talking things over with. One of the rising stars in the game, a young assistant in the coordinator, Rhett Lashley. And here is McFain from 54. And how about that? 54 yard field goal for Adam McFain. The first thing to feel good about as this first half comes to an end for the Arkansas Razorbacks. Auburn was running all over them. Let's send it back to the studio for the Buick Halftime Report. With the Auburn Visa check card from Regents.
Well, Coach, you're coming off a bye week, and the very first play of the game to Eli Stove, a freshman. How long did you come up with that play, and what was it called? Well, you know, we really worked hard on our freshmen getting ready to play, and, uh, you know, that was a great way to start the game and gave us some momentum. You weren't sure if you'd have Carrion Johnson. We haven't seen him yet, but Petway's been doing so good. Can you leave Carrion out for another week and let him get healthy? You know, we're hoping so. I mean, he's, he's ready to play if needed. He's not 100%, but Petway's doing a great job. Stanton Truen's doing a great job, too. We just got to keep running the football. All right. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. Up the run, and Arkansas not able to do that in the first half. And they're going to get the ball to start this second half. Squib kick that goes out of bounds. Moments ago, Coach Bielema with Holly. Well, Coach, how serious is Austin Allen's knee injury? Well, uh, obviously, you got more than anything, it's a, a bruise. Uh, got stepped on there, and uh, uh, everything checks out structurally. He wants to go and got clearance with the doctors. But again, another great uh, individual performance. What's not going so great? defense 268 yards how do you fix that well obviously they couldn't wait to run that first play we got to secure it there's been three times where we've lost our edges all result in, in critical downs they ran that wheel route over there obviously baited us into that we have to secure contain the football outside in and, and obviously tackle a lot better thanks coach thank you that play that he says they couldn't wait to run was yeah. eli stove's 78 yard touchdown run what do they start the second half with the sledgehammer again Cameron Petway. 17th carry of the ball game. He's got 120 yards tonight. Had 169 and three touchdowns last time out against Mississippi State. Look at the first half numbers that he has put together. Remember, Carrion Johnson is out injured. Stanton Truitt now in the backfield. And he gets to the outside here. Well, that's exactly Good what, pursuit. yeah, that's what Brett Bielema was telling Holly about setting the edges, not being soft on the edge of the defense. Pursue, keep the ball on your inside shoulder, and relatively short gain on the play. Now Rob Smith and Brett Bielema would like nothing more than get a three and out to start their opening possession here in the second half. Chance for that here, third and five. Sean White with time. And that's where they want to see improvement with Sean White is his accuracy downfield, Todd. Yeah, he's a very accurate thrower on short and intermediate routes. He has not been as accurate, and part of it is because his follow-through is kind of weird at the end of deep throws. Instead of stepping into the throw and following through on balance, watch him kind of fall off to the side after he makes the throw. That can't do anything but affect his accuracy on those deeper throws. He gets away with it on the shorter throws. It comes back and get him a little bit on the longer throw. So Phillips on to punt, and this is an umbrella punt that goes short and bounces at the 30, retreating towards the 32-yard line. So not a good effort there by Phillips, just a 29-yard punt. What do you say we get to the Outback trivia question? Austin Allen or Ollie Williams came in leading the SEC in pass yards and rush yards, respectively. When's the last time one school had the quarterback lead the SEC in pass yards and the running back who led in rushing yards? That's a good one. Yeah. That is a good question right there. Been so many dynamic duos through the years, especially recently in the SEC. When's the last time that happened? Now Austin Allen left the game for a moment with that right knee issue. Well, he is back to work here, down 25. And he was trying to get it to Cornelius. He was covered by Rudy Ford. Haven't been many opportunities to go deep down the field because of the protection. That time protection was good, but Auburn's deep coverage was, was better. Austin Allen had hit his last eight passes before that one. Second and ten. 
And a crossing route. Keon Hatcher for a first down. Out to the 48-yard line, 17-yard reception. Nice job by Austin Allen just maneuvering in the pocket. Now watch Mon Adams. He's going to get pressure. And Austin Allen doesn't panic. He's just going to sidestep a little bit, open up a new throwing window, and find Hatcher over the middle for a nice completion. Took both Rollerson and Williams to try to contain Montrevious Mon Adams, one of the best defensive linemen in the country. High formation lead here with Williams, and he was tackled for a loss as Deshaun Davis was the first to trip him up. Trey Williams also getting involved. Deshaun Davis a little undersized for that Mike or middle linebacker position listed at 239. But quick, smart, and that's the second time we've seen him get behind the line of scrimmage and make a play. Kevin Steele told us, he said, I don't worry about size when it comes to my linebackers. I had Sam Mills back yeah. in the day. Five, One of the nine. best of all time at five foot nine. Second and 11. Allen had to step up again. Hatcher wrestled down immediately by Rudy Ford. Let's check in with Holly. We're talking about Kevin Steele, the defensive coordinator. During this offseason, he decided to really study someone that he respects on the defensive side of the ball. He said, I have got a box of literally every single thing that Pete Carroll has said or written. He really wanted to make a good impression with his young people on how to motivate them, how to get them energized. He said, Pete Carroll coaches with confidence, with fun and energy. That's what I want to be to these young men. And so far tonight, it looks like he did the right things. And still, is big. And right now, it's the roar of a crowd on third and eight and facing this defense for Austin Allen. Batted again. Was that intercepted? No, they're saying. But you see the athleticism of Mon Adams as Marlon Davidson so active getting in there. Against Allen. They're so versatile because they can take Mon Adams and put him at the end and put Lawson in here at the tackle and they can just adapt either way. And it's those two that can bind. You see the twist on the other side, Marlon Davidson in there with the tip. This front is impressive. Marlon Davidson has an unbelievable upside. Yeah. He and number five, Derek Brown, the two true freshmen that are part of this defensive line rotation. And the beat goes on for the Auburn defense as Allen takes a seat. It's important in this offense, particularly as fast as they want to go. Really understands what they're trying to do. Pretty easy to do that the past couple games. Handed off to Bubba Petway again for five. Petway's been sensational. The one area where Sean White, the coach, has told us he needs to continue to improve is his consistency in throwing the deep ball because a lot of the big plays in this offense are generated off of play action deep throws. Very accurate short and intermediate intermediate routes. Second and five and Petway again is rolling. Sean White came in today leading the SEC in completion percentage but there's something unique with him Tom. Well in pregame you can see he he just follows through on balance like you would expect but in the game sometimes he gets a little overexcited with his feet and that fall away just affects his balance. There's Ryan Davis on the hitch to the near side. And he's probably not even aware of in the game because he doesn't do it in practice. But in the games, he gets a little excited. Brett Lashley says, I think sometimes he wants to see where the pass is going and see how big of a play it is. And he just doesn't finish the throw properly. Second and three. Look at Bubba Petway crossing midfield. You know, back to the Sean White conversation, Todd. You know, there was a point earlier this season when White and John Franklin and Jeremy Johnson yeah. were all out there. The Clemson game, they were rotating three quarterbacks as they keep it on the ground again. But really, 
since Gus Malzahn and Rhett Lashley gave Sean White the keys to the car, just having that confidence and knowing you're the man, yeah. you've seen him emerge. Yeah, and I think his competitiveness and his toughness, you know, it has kind of rallied his team. And I think that, that John Franklin is kind of the backup guy now, and he offers them a different spark. We may see him has played very consistently in running this offense. There's that fake pitch. They can take a shot off of it, and they do. And downfield, Tony Stevens had a chance to secure it. He was covered by Andre Tolliver. Yeah, that's a, a nice little action where they fake the toss, but Andre Tolliver, because it was man coverage, was not looking at the fake. So he was there with the intended receiver, Stevens, the whole time and made a nice play on the football. If it's zone coverage and those defensive backs are looking in at the quarterback, they get fooled by that fake. But man coverage, their eyes are on the man right in front of them and not the quarterback. Here's how you know you're having a good night on offense. For Auburn, this third and eight is their longest third down tonight. So may get pressure. They pick it up. Sean White. There's the completion to Nate Craig Myers for 11 and moving the sticks. And a better follow through by Sean White. There was a little traffic around his feet, but he stepped into that throw. And again, the short and the intermediate routes. He is a much more accurate passer. That was a beautiful throw to the sideline for a first down. Here's counter out of that slant left, and this time it was well read by Josh Lydell. I don't know what I have to do with the Pink Panther, but it better not be just clocking the ball. Come up with something better, Red. I think it might have been that jet sweep for the touchdown, the no, first you're play. Being, you're huh? The very way kind. you called it, I mean, your call was. There was Pretty no good. inside the information stove on that. was red there. hot, yeah. so I bet that was your play. <laughs> Holly's mad, though. She wants her picture on. Uh, she's far cars. more deserving, trust me. And it was a good break on the ball that time by Jared Collins. One of the interesting things about this Auburn offense is they get ready to face another third down play. Their offensive line coach, Herb Hand, one of the most well-respected line coaches in all of college football, very unique, is not on the field. He's up in the press box. There's Herb. You don't normally see an offensive line coach that's not on the field with his guys. He has a GA that's down there with him. Herb Hand sees the whole field, has more of an offensive coordinator's mind and mindset and look at the game as opposed to just a line coach. You know, Herb Hand Come is out. also Auburn. another reason why Gus Malzahn felt so comfortable in not being the death by Tiger. It's a maple donut that's got a sausage link right in the middle of it. <laughs> I like sausage. I like donuts. I don't like the idea of that combination. Local right. fans like this combination. Sean White and a lot of green in front of him. Good run by White first down. Auburn. Again, the decision making of Sean White. What what has made him the stabilizing guy at the quarterback position? His decision making, his accuracy as he comes out of the game right now. And now we see John Franklin in the red zone. Averages 11.4 yards per rush. John Franklin. And here he goes. And look at how fast he is. It'll be first and goal, Auburn. 11 yards there designed, right on his average. Yep, design quarterback run. He showed pass. He waited for his pulling guard, Alex Kozan, to get out in front and followed him for a nice game. And a time, Petway for two yards. John Franklin started his career at Florida State. As Sean White comes back on the field. Went to East Mississippi Junior College. And by all accounts has been a great teammate here. Has just been a guy that they really feel strongly about. During the bye week he got most of the reps. 
And I think in the red zone, he gives them a real different threat with his running ability. Second and goal. Petway met at the line of scrimmage, and it barely mattered. As he went ahead for three, it was Beanham the first to hit him. Early in the season, Auburn struggled to score touchdowns in the red zone. Culminated with that LSU game where they were six times in a red zone, had to settle for six field goals. Stack formation, follow the fullback, and Arkansas did to find Bubba Petway, Dwayne Eugene with the tackle. There is Vincent Edward Jackson. You know where, where Bo would go on this play. over the top, over like the in top. 1982, when yeah. he did it against Alabama's defensive line. One of the signature victories in Auburn history, ending Bama's nine game winning streak over Auburn. I'm not so sure Petway's got the same springs in his legs that Bo had. Arkansas, first time out of the half. So the Razorbacks will use a timeout. We're going to dance with fourth and goal when we return. Shoe, their defense would, would slip a little bit. They have been outstanding. Here's fourth and goal. Sean White. Did he play that to perfection or what? How about it, Sean White? Well, he played it to perfection. And that lead guy, you follow Chandler Cox, you'll see where the football is going. He, he made a beautiful play, too, faking where he was going to block. Watch Chandler Cox fake inside, then bubble out and get the key block to allow Sean White to get to the edge. Term often described with Chandler Cox is he's the indicator. Yeah. Find him, find the ball, but just enough of that inside to throw them off. And White with the rushing touchdown. And let's go to the studio and say hello to Adnan. Very curious to see how things are going to play out in the Big 12. You already mentioned it. You're very impressed yeah. with West Virginia. Oklahoma obviously playing at a much higher level than they were earlier in the year. Everybody kind of thought with all the things going on with Baylor that, you know, they would fall off, but they're sitting there still undefeated as well. Baylor and West Virginia unbeaten. Oklahoma, of course, will have something to say about the Big 12 race in the month of November as we work our way towards the big reveal of the college football playoff. SEC circles there have been many pointing to the role Auburn can play in the month of November and how November 26 could shape up and is the date of the Iron Bowl Daniel Carlson is just an incredible weapon here yet another touchback I thought this was a great Aflac trivia question that we asked a little earlier because Robbie Williams and Austin Aflac. Allen came in leading the SEC in rushing and passing. So he said, when was the last time that happened? And one school had a quarterback lead the league in pass yards, a running back lead in rush yards. No Sean Moreno and Matthew Stafford all the way back mm. in 2008 for Georgia. Yeah. Two great ones. Here's a tough one. Austin Allen, the quarterback. You know, he went down earlier tonight. As Holly was reporting on the right knee injury, but he is as tough as could be, hanging in there. 
And with time in the pocket, he's going to go underneath. Keon Hatcher gets free for a moment and will have a first down for the Razorbacks. I think Keon Hatcher is a very underrated wide receiver. Well, we've seen him again a lot. He was hurt last year early, missed the rest of the season. That's his sixth catch tonight. Coming into the ball game, 21 catches, and he makes the tough catches. He just, he's a physical guy, and uh, he has been a very dependable receiver for Austin Allen. He was critical on that game-winning drive against Ole Miss at a fourth down conversion. Pressure nearly got to Austin Allen again, but it'll go as an incomplete pass. Now Austin did a good job of feeling this and knowing that the pressure was coming. A blitz coming from the outside this time. A free rusher is going to get to Austin Allen. He knows that he's got pressure. He kind of dances a little bit and tries to dump it to Whaley. An incomplete pass in that situation, much better than a sack and a loss of yardage play. is complete to Jeremy Sprinkle as we have not called his name enough tonight. No, he's battled an ankle injury for the last several weeks. Heard it in the A&M game. He's not been 100%, but he gets matched up on a corner. Javaris Davis and a nice route on the little skinny post. And Austin Allen puts the puts the ball right on the on the numbers. Go to the field to Holly. Well, look on the sideline. There is a very unusual yard marker, first down marker out here. You can see it's digital where it goes from first to second down. It's actually invented by Dana Marquez and the industrial supply chain here at Auburn University. They're the only school in the country that has this. I kept thinking, what looks weird about the sidelines tonight? And then I figured it out. Digital yard markers. This is very cool on the on the down markers. I like it, Holly. Yeah, I saw it at practice Thursday. They had them out there on the practice field, too. I thought that was pretty cool. Second and eight. And here's a slant to Cornelius. And it'll be a first down for the Razorbacks. Nine yard reception. Cornelius has had an outstanding season. Had the go ahead game winning touchdown run last week against Ole Miss. Nice little drive going right here now for Austin Allen in the Arkansas offense. Pretty solid pass protection so far. Both Lawson and Adams out of the game right now, getting a breather. Going to launch it downfield to Hatcher, who had a weight on it as it drifted out to the outside. Now that pressure. was Javaris Davis with the coverage there. And pressure right on the inside again. When that pressure comes right up into the quarterback's lap, it's very hard to be accurate or set your feet to throw. He, he really has nowhere to move in the pocket, has to throw it off his back foot, and the ball goes out of bounds incomplete. Arkansas's longest play tonight, 19 yards. Second and ten. Inside route couldn't connect with Drew Morgan. The push right up the middle by yeah. the defensive line time and again is having an impact. And it just prevents you as a quarterback from stepping into your throw and finishing your throw. See Ole Miss and LSU is one of the next games up. Brent Musburger, Jesse Palmer, and Kaylee Hartung will be on the call down in Death Valley. They're 2-0 and with Ed Orgeron. As their interim head coach, we'll see if LSU can keep rolling. For now, a third and ten. Lawson and Adams back in the game for this third down play. Allen was running out of options as he tried to get it to Cornelius. Well, this was Carl Lawson. He lined up in a linebacker position in a stand-up position that time and just kind of tracked the quarterback. 
He had rested on a couple plays. This time he was lined up as a linebacker, and when Allen was flushed from the pocket, he pursued and forced the incomplete pass. So a fourth and ten. Double nickels, Carl Lawson on the inside, Mon Adams on the outside, bottom of your screen. Coming after Austin Allen. There he is, Lawson. What an athletic effort that time. Javaris Davis tracking that ball. Well, Carl Lawson again made the play. His penetration, watch, watch Lawson right here, beat inside the tackle, force Austin Allen out of the pocket, throwing it off balance, trying to get enough on the football. It hangs, and an athletic play on the sideline by Javaris Davis. Second interception of the season for Javaris Davis. He has a very bright future, the redshirt freshman cornerback for Auburn. And John Franklin the third in at quarterback for the Tigers. Here's some reverse action now as Eli Stove. Look at the wiggle out of this freshman. Nine yard run. He earned every inch. Sean White over on the sideline. 11 passes thrown, completed six. That is the stat line they would prefer. Yeah, absolutely. For Sean White playing winning football. Franklin, another first down for Auburn. Past couple games for Sean White. 18 passes thrown in each. This even better in terms of having it on their terms. Yeah. Franklin throws a, a nice deep ball. And this is a, an opportunity they might want to let him get a throw in here on a vertical play. True, it's the running back. And he's got blazing speed. A former wide receiver just tripped up by Santos Ramirez, a gain of 14. Nice blocking by the left guard, Alex Kozan, number 63 on that play. And here is Franklin keeping it. Made the first man miss, but then thrown down by Brooks Ellis, a gain of four. And there is Sean White coming back in as Rhett Lashley will call John Franklin over. You mentioned Truitt. He's just been the running back full time for the last three weeks. I'd say he's taken to the position pretty well. There he is again. A block in front, cuts back to the inside. It'll be third and one from there. Remember, carry on Johnson. Out of action. He is more traditional running back in terms of giving them options. I mean, Bubba yeah. Pedway's been outstanding, yeah. but he's the bigger back, the thudding back. Jackson practiced all week. He warmed up before the game. As Holly mentioned, he looked a little bit tentative. And this is a great opportunity for them to give him yet another week to rest for the road that's ahead. Again, a, a real change of pace runner with Petway. Petway, the straight ahead 240 pounder, and carry on Johnson, more shifty. And Petway easily manages a fresh set of downs. You think of the road ahead of playing at Ole Miss and at Georgia and at Alabama, you're going to want to have both healthy backs. Yep. So giving carry on Johnson a night like this off is. A great reward. He was Mr. Football in the state of Alabama in 2014 and a very worthy follow on Twitter. Much like you, <laughs> live tweeting entire meals time and time yeah. again that get a lot of attention. I would highly recommend you go back and look at Todd Blackledge's Twitter feed of recent days. Here's Petway, another touchdown for Auburn. What a night for Bubba. A little smile out of Bo, a shake of the head. That kind of night, all too easy. He doesn't have the ability necessarily to make you miss, but he can bounce. Watch him get to the line, see the edge crash in, bounce it, picks up a nice block from his freshman receiver, Nate Craig Myers. 
And the big man into the touchdown again. <laughs> Bo likes it. I bet he'd like playing in this offense. Oh, he'd love it. <laughs> of course, he had a great time here with the legendary coach die. The 10th run over 10 yards for Auburn tonight. Petway with 192 yards. There is the Heisman Trophy winner just underneath us there Todd here we are and there is Bose number retired. You couple this defense led by the defensive front with a place kicker who kicks it out of the end zone darn near every time and a punter who doesn't get any return yardage every facet of the game there's a rare return against Carlson Dion Stewart and he actually makes a good return of it they're not used to kick coverage down here at Auburn a flag is down this may come back but they're not conditioned no. to fill in the lanes no. and tackling a guy they never see it because of the leg of Daniel Carlson you know you practice it in practice but you don't tackle live and they never have to do it in a game until oh, they, right there. On the return team for 16. Half the to the goal. First down. Take a look. This is going to come back. There's going to be a hold on the right side right here. Yep. Reached out and grabbed the jersey and twisted. All you needed to see. Let's go to the studio and visit with Adnan. <laughs> Oklahoma 16th in the country right now. Of course, the two losses. But unbeaten in conference play. Raleigh Williams met by Trey Williams, one of the most physically talented of this group of Auburn defenders. Had nine tackles against LSU. May have one more play here in the third quarter. My question is at 42 to 3, how long do you keep Austin Allen in the ballgame if you're Brett Bielema and Dan Enos? Considering how invaluable he is to the success that they have had this year. Hurt his knee earlier. We will see how long that continues for. It has been all Auburn all night. Alabama and tonight this is the most devastating 411 to 28 the difference in running the football tonight second and nine as Allen throws it behind into the outside of Sprinkle you take a look at this now in, in the A&M game they gave up 366 rushing Alabama 264 and only were able to get 73 and then tonight the biggest difference yet that they're behind and are throwing more than maybe they would want plays into it. But they have not been able to run the football with any kind of consistency in those games that uh, that that they've not been able to win the first two and very difficult situation in this game with one quarter to play. Here's a third and nine and from his end zone throwing incomplete. As Hatcher was covered by Carlton Davis. I don't think I'd go beyond this possession. I, I would take Austin Allen out of the ball game right now. Let him go ahead and start to ice that knee. He's missed his last six attempts. And he uh, it's gonna be, you know, I, I just think you want to keep him healthy and get him as strong as you can for the next time out. You get a bye week next week. He's got two weeks to recover. Get Ty Story in and get him some work here in the fourth quarter. And Baker punting from his own end zone. 
five this ball back. Fair catch at the 42. Well, last game, Cam Petway ran for 169 yards, and he's at it again tonight. Showing power, showing a, a little bit of ability to get outside and that straight ahead speed. 27 carries tonight, 192 yards. He averages seven yards per carry. And has shown a great ability to break arm tackles, and he knows where the end zone is. You know, keep in mind of what people thought was going to be the running back situation here at Auburn. You see the 192 rush yards, you know. Rock Thomas transferred out in late May. Javon Robinson was dismissed from the team on the first day of fall camp. Peyton Barber off to the NFL. And now Carrion Johnson dealing with an injury. Yeah. This is great that they've got Butler Petway doing what he's doing. John Franklin, the speedy quarterback, getting some extended time with the score so lopsided. No, Auburn doesn't have to worry about tempo right now. They don't huddle because they never huddle, but they're not going to be in a big hurry to run plays. They want to use clock now, continue to run the football. They're they're gonna they got a great chance of running for over 500 yards in this game. Well, they're gonna have a fresh set of downs thanks to Truett. Holly, I'm not making any excuses. This has been a tough game for the Arkansas defense, but do keep in mind they are without their leading tackler. Dre Greenlaw broke his foot two weeks ago. They've had a guy that filled in very well for him and Dwayne Eugene last week, but guys, just clearly they are missing some girth in that linebacker. Once you get to that second line, they've had a really hard time bringing Petway down, even though he's been out for two weeks now. Uh, Dre Greenlaw is still the number two tackler on this team, so it just gives you an idea of what his impact is and what they're missing tonight. Yeah, yeah, he was a broken great foot against Alabama. Truett unable to get free from Jared Collins, four yards there. Now there is. The backup quarterback, Ty Story, warming up. You asked the question, how much longer would we see Austin Allen? Story had to come in earlier when Allen left with that right knee injury. Auburn has now run it 16 straight times. There's Eli Stove. Remember how the game started. It's going to bookend things a bit here. Now that is actually a pass. That's for 11 technically, yards. Yes, technically a pass, but really a run. Some big bodies coming in here. As number 98 is worn by Tucker Brown, 290-pound yeah, offensive lineman who's a jumbo tight end. They're going to a heavy lineup now, so they've actually got six offensive linemen in up here. No true, that guy on tight end is, a, is the right guard who's bumped out to the tight end. Something happened. It's called Stanton Truitt. He had other ideas. 31 yard touchdown. There's just so many big bodies in there with this jumbo lineup that when Truett gets it and he kind of hides in here, Arkansas can't find him. They just get all washed away by these big bodies. And you got the big tight end, six foot four, 260 pound Jalen Harris in there as well. And an easy touchdown run for Auburn. No running out the clock for Truett. He had more business to take care of. His third touchdown of the night. First team since Oklahoma in 09 to be ranked in the poll at this point of the season with a 500 or worse record. We saw Ole Miss and Arkansas last week. What's your feel on Ole Miss LSU? Well, it's a great rivalry. First of all, a lot of people don't know outside of the Southeast how intense of a rivalry Ole Miss LSU is. I think there's there's still a lot of unknown for me with LSU. I'm excited to watch that game. We saw Ole Miss last week. I think offensively they're very explosive. Chad Kelly can can really light it up. Defensively they struggle to stop the run. 
They did not stop Arkansas from run, running it, and I'm sure LSU, even if they are spreading it out and doing some different things offensively, they're going to want to run the football, especially getting Leonard Fournette back tonight. So uh, can Ole Miss stop the run with more success than they've shown this year? That'll be a big question tonight. You know, Ty Story is in at quarterback for Arkansas. The red shirt freshman comes in to replace Austin Allen. Who had a rough night, got banged around, and of course, upside down on the scoreboard. Here's Whaley. Let's go to the studio and say hello to Adnan again. Personal foul, illegal block on the waist, offense number 70. Let's look at the group of five headliners. You know, we talk a lot about Tom Herman, and rightfully so. Came from Ohio State, has done a brilliant job at Houston. But that guy he's facing tonight, a pretty good young head coach also, Chad Morris. The job that he's doing, he was with Dabo Sweeney at Clemson, kind of got that offense started, and then uh, has done a really nice job at SMU. Chad Morris very close with Gus Malzahn yeah. as well. Thank Gus mentions he will monitor other offenses and take a peek at what others are doing. Now they back him up to a first and 22. And well met that time by Richard McBride. A lot of backup defenders in the game for Auburn getting a chance to play. And they're not going to slow down. It's a hard place to be if you're Arkansas. You had a very emotional win a week ago. You felt like you got things turned around and going in the direction you want. Then you ran into a, a real buzzsaw here tonight in Auburn. A lot of starters in there with the exception of Ty Story going against some young fresh bodies for Auburn. Here is Story now to pass as he tried to check down to Drew Morgan. And those two couldn't connect. I would say the bye week couldn't come at a better time for Arkansas. This is a team that looks like they need a rest. You know what they've done recently offensively. They've had so many thrilling games and big outputs. Even in the loss of Texas A&M and Alabama still slinging it around. But tonight only 217 total yards of offense for Arkansas. Third and 21. Story pressured, smothered, and covered, as they like to say, down south. So Lawrence and Holland able to come up with the sack. Just collapsing the pocket. I mean, that's just pure bull rush strength by Lawrence, number 94. Right into the lap of the quarterback. Not the view a punter wants to let you see. Toby Baker heels just inside the back of his end zone. over 10 minutes to play down here at Jordan Hare where the defense is still rolling along on the plains. You see regular season game and almost 10 yards per carry. I mean it's just been chunk play after chunk play in the running game. John Franklin in at quarterback for Sean White. They open the game with a little bit of a trick play, a reverse, a jet sweep for a long touchdown run, and they have not slowed down at all as they near 500 yards of rushing. Dietrich Wise has not played a big role tonight. That guy has. That is Rhett Lashley, who has been calling the plays as Gus Malzahn handed over those duties a few weeks ago and ever since then this Auburn offense has looked very impressive. 
Here's Franklin now as they run the quarterback sweep out of that stack right formation. Gain of five. Well, as you think about this team, if they continue to develop their passing game with all these young receivers, with their young quarterback, Sean White, as he progresses and develops more consistency in his deep ball, the way their defense is playing, you've got a place kicker in Daniel Carlson who you can count on from anywhere on the field to get you three points. Was six for six, all 18 points for Auburn in their win over LSU. Kicks the ball out of the end zone on kickoffs. I mean, they, they have the makings of a team that could make a real run here in the second half of the season. No, they're built the right way. I agree with you. The only element remaining is if they can take those big shots downfield yeah. and find some success with Sean White. The young wide receivers are good enough to go to the next level before the season's over. Because they will have great opportunities for that. Because of how well they run the football, teams are going to have to load up to stop the run, leaving single coverage on the outside. So the opportunities for big plays down the field will be there, but they got to be able to capitalize on it. And it's interesting because there's always been the thought as we got a fourth and three here in no man's land. There's always been at the thought that the Auburn offense, the Gus Malzahn Auburn offense, whether as the play caller in the championship season of 2010 or the Nick Marshall team in 2013 that went to the national championship game, is at its best when it has the dynamic elite running quarterback. But they've got enough here in when you put all the pieces together with this system. Sean White, by the way, did have a couple of runs tonight. He sure did. Kept him honest, didn't he? Opening play and they've never stopped just running the ball with ease against Arkansas 49 to 3 TJ Hammonds getting some work now in the backfield. Let's go to the field to Holly. Well, depending upon the severity of the injury to Austin Allen the Arkansas quarterback tie story in there right now but guys they have a quarterback in Cole Kelly number 15 on the sideline you'll see me 6'7 275 pounds out of Louisiana Brett Bielema loves this kid every week going through the season they've met with him and talked to him about whether they're going to redshirt him or not Dan Eno said that after last week they probably wouldn't take the red shirt off I did ask Brett at halftime he said no I don't think we will so it might be tie story moving forward if Austin Allen can't go. Yeah, game number eight of the season. And you start to think a little differently as Hatcher is driven back that time by Markel Boston. Yeah, you see that big quarterback, it makes you think of Ryan Mallett. More the same number, I believe. And he's a big quarterback with a big arm. This kid can make all the throws, has a bright future. I mean, he's got a unbelievable cannon for an arm, according to those who have been watching him in the course of the past year. True freshman. Ty Story in there right now. It was a rough night for Austin Allen. Third and nine, as Williams cannot find much traction. Reminder that. John Butchergrass, Nicole Briscoe will have Sports Center coming up a little later on. They'll have all the highlights and complete breakdown of the NLCS plus the day in college football. Alabama and Texas A&M could have some upsets as the night continues. SMU is on top of Houston by 21. Yelled a fro hold down after the end of that play. <laughs> Here he is right here. Happened after the play had passed him. He got hit from the side, I think. Had his leg in there, kind of funny. Rough night for those big guys up front. Dan Skipper, the senior left tackle. Frank Ragnow, the center. Froholt, Rollerson, Wallace. Still in there to the bitter end. This has not been their night. There's Roberts on the return. 
as he gets his way to the 33. No tough night when you're facing the defensive line of Auburn. There was an incident a few weeks ago with a small fire, so they're giving the other tree a break here. Here's Cam Martin as the running game of Auburn is no break for the Arkansas defense as they continue to pile up the yardage. Well, Arkansas has a lot of second line guys on their defensive line. But these Auburn guys are getting a chance to play now. You can't tell them to slow down. They want to go in there and execute and run their offense and run at full speed and it's up to Arkansas to to figure out a way here in the last five and a half minutes to to slow them down and keep them out of the end zone. Auburn has 63 total plays none for a loss zero negative yardage plays. That 63 now 64 number is down because they stopped using tempo as well or else it would be up higher. Here's the remaining schedule. How good does the Iron Bowl look right about now? I'm going to be interested to hear what Danny, Joey, and Adnan on college football final have to say about the way they view this Auburn team right now and the kind of role they can play in the stretch run of the SEC. It was interesting. When these two teams played last year in Fayetteville, it was a turning point game for both teams. Arkansas finished strong. Auburn kind of spiraled out to finish the year. Look at Cam Martin. Here he goes. I mean, this is just getting silly in the box score right now. Outrageous run totals continue for Auburn as they are over 500 rushing yards now against Arkansas. But see, this is just bad defense. This is losing your contain, losing the edges, defenders who don't close the play correctly and allow the tailback to go all the way and turn the corner and then run straight down the sidelines to the end zone. Again, you, you, you can't tell these guys to slow down and not try to score. It's up to Arkansas to stop them, and they weren't able to do it. Our good hands play is brought to you by Allstate, and it's the good hands of holding on to the ball by the running backs and the run game of Auburn. Well, that's how it started. The very first play of the game, instead of handing it off inside, they went to Stove on the, the jet sweep, and they have not slowed down running the football all night. It's been a few quarterback runs, been a lot of Camp Petway runs. Stanton Truitt, who just moved to running back three weeks ago from wide receiver in the action. It's just been a little bit of everything. And the last one, Cam White, the fresh, or Cam Martin, the freshman out of Port Arthur, Texas, was a Baylor commit, got out of his obligation there, came to Auburn, and now as a team, 532 yards rushing on 53 carries for Auburn. That's just that's Stacking silly. up close to what they did in that outrageous SEC championship yeah. game performance they had against Mizzou a few years back and already in terms of an SEC regular season game it's the most in Auburn history 532 rushing yards for Auburn tonight. They're even gonna give Daniel Carlson a six to three as Ian Shannon will have the honors this time. There is some juice in this place with this program right now. Deion Stewart from about eight yards deep in the end zone, and he is met with that decision at the 15. What's up, Adnan?
Oh very kind very kind Chad Kelly by the way coming up against LSU and since the start of last season against ranked teams he leads college football in touchdowns responsible for and 20 yard completions that will be the challenge for the LSU yeah. defense tonight of dealing with Chad Kelly and Ole Miss. It's interesting the game we did last week it seemed like there was times in the late in that game in the fourth quarter that Chad Kelly and his wide receiver seemed a little bit out of sync. They were dropping some balls they don't normally drop kind of miscommunicating on some routes. I'm sure they worked hard to correct that this week. Chad Kelly loves to throw that ball down the field and they have big physical receivers that will really challenge the secondary of LSU. Now that's the group that was able to deal with Chad Kelly last week. Of course LSU very athletic defensive group. Here's Mitchell now Damon Mitchell trying to spin free. Fifty six to three against a ranked team here. Largest margins over ranked teams fifty three point margin right now next closest in Auburn history was back in twenty ten I believe that was the SEC championship game when they won by thirty nine over South Carolina. Well this is a game that when people wake up tomorrow and see the score if they listen to Danny and Joey later on talk about the game it's going to catch people's attention because uh, th this was an impressive display on both sides of the ball it wasn't just their running game what was outstanding but it was the defensive front that we talked about at the top of the show. This is a complete looking football team that is going to continue to get better as their young skill guys on offense get better. I like their offensive line. I love their defensive line. That's Brian Wallace the starting right tackle for Arkansas with the medical staff out there apparently taking a look at his left leg. No, he knows all about that defensive line of Auburn after tonight. I love the defensive line for yeah, what it's worth. I do too. When I think about, you know, we listen, Alabama is super, superb, absolutely yeah. superb. Well, there is the Jumbotron here at Jordan Hare, which is 190 feet wide and 57 feet tall. You can sit back and watch this game. They got. The NL State, championship series and you got Ohio State Penn State which is just a field goal lead right now for Ohio State. Third and three story that was an awkward pass there it was tipped. Interesting to see how Ohio State deals with things and then next week. Well, it says Big Saturday, Big Ten Saturday, and it's going to be headlined by a top ten matchup of undefeated Nebraska at Wisconsin and that Wisconsin defense. Well, they're the best. You know, last week we had Ole Miss. We said Ole Miss is the best two-loss team in college football. They lost to give them three. Wisconsin is clearly the best two-loss team in college football right now. Their two losses to Ohio State and Michigan, both close games. 14 to 7 in Ann Arbor and then the overtime loss to Ohio State a week ago and their defense with Justin Wilcox as their their new coordinator is outstanding. Paul Chris very solid coach their young quarterback getting better each week. That'll be a real challenge for Nebraska even though they're the higher and changed if they if they really have it going in the right direction again they get Fournette back tonight. I'm really anxious and curious to watch what that team looks like tonight again against an Ole Miss team that I think is very capable, a very good football team, a lot of skill on offense. Uh, that That's an important game for LSU to kind of hold serve, particularly uh, with this Auburn team. LSU has only allowed three passing touchdowns this season. John Franklin. We've got a lot of reps during the bye week. And we see him in goal line packages and 
helping out with the running game, but obviously with this score taking over for Sean White as quarterback in every down here in the back half of this second half. Your week seven NFL Sunday can get started with NFL Insiders, the Sunday edition. Then at 11, it is Sunday NFL Countdown, and that crew takes you right up until kickoff. Then Monday Night Football has the Texans and the Broncos going at it at 8.15 Eastern on ESPN. You know, a lot of people around college football, and particularly here in the in the South, want to ask, is there anybody that can measure up to Alabama that can really challenge them as this season goes on? I think Auburn has the makings of a team that could if their passing game continues to grow and get better because as well as they've looked running the football tonight with now 541 yards, they're not going to line up and just play smash mouth football and run it against that front seven of Alabama. They got to be a balanced complete team. They've got the defense I think and they've got the running game their passing game. If it continues to evolve and develop with that guy Sean White pulling the trigger uh, it could be very interesting here by the end of November and this tonight done without the services of carry on Johnson yeah. the running back. It was Bubba Petway with 192 rushing yards and two rushing touchdowns. On a night when Gus Malzahn's team ran for 544 yards against Arkansas. Their largest margin of victory over a ranked team. 56 to 3, they clobber 17th ranked Arkansas. Gonna be interesting to watch Auburn down the stretch of this season. We still got more SEC action to come your way with big game Brent, Brett Musburger, Jesse Palmer, and Kaylee Hartung with Ole Miss and LSU. Enjoy the rest of your night, everybody.